Welcome to a new video about analog electronic circuits. We continue with another circuit, this time with a difference amplifier. We have seen in the previous videos the circuits using a voltage follower, inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier and also the summing amplifiers. In this case we will look at the difference amplifier using an operational amplifier. Of course we will look at the calculation step by step and also verify our calculations in SPI simulations. So let's look at our problem in this case we have this circuit this triangle again it is the op amp it's considered to be ideal we have two input voltages va and vb two volts and six volts and we have four resistors r1 r2 r3 and r4 the values are shown here and we have a load load voltage and here is the load uh, load resistance and also the load voltage now we would like to calculate three things the expression of this load voltage as a function of the two inputs the VA and VB the load voltage itself and the current delivered by the op amp which is this current here so how do we work this out let's start again step by step working out and then see also that in the simulation step one is determine the circuit condition in this case we have the op amp we always want to know what the V plus and the V minus is so these two voltage nodes are very important now due to negative feedback we have a negative feedback from the output to this inverting input we have a negative feedback that results in that the V plus node voltage is equal to the V minus node voltage it is not zero in this case so you don't say that is zero you must be very careful in this is something we will use it later and another uh, important parameter we will use for the op amp is the ideal op amp has an infinite input impedance or input, input, uh, infinite input resistance. So the currents entering in the op amp, the I plus and the I minus, are both zero. So we can also say I plus is equal to I minus is zero. So this is also very really useful for later discussion. So let's start with the first one. Express the load voltage as a function of the two inputs VA and VB. How can we do this? Now, let's also write down our circuit equations because we can use, since we have two voltage sources or two sources, we can use the position principle. So we can activate one of the sources, VA, and then disable the other. That means in this case, since this is a voltage source, this will be a short, so this will be actually connected to ground. And when you activate only VB, then this is grounded. So in the first case, you can say VL, that's the load voltage, is a summation of the VL due to only VA plus the VL due to only VB. So we see the partial effects. And we have discussed this in a separate video uh, using superposition principle on a circuit. So we have dealt with uh, different circuits. Three examples are actually shown in the playlist of DC electric circuit. So I advise you if you want more detail about this to look at that video also. It's also given in the description of this video. So we can call this now equation number one. We say okay the VL is now summation of these two. Let's then calculate these separate expressions. So the VL due to the VA is the expression minus R2 over R1 times VA. Why? Let's consider this again carefully. This is grounded because I only activate VA. That's the superposition principle, one source at a time active. If this is ground, then this goes to parallel with this R4. So R3 and R4 goes to in a parallel combination. Since I plus is zero, the current flowing in here, the current flowing in the parallel combination of R3 and R4 is also I plus, which is zero. So the voltage drop across them is zero. That means there is no voltage across them you can consider it as a wire, so you can see it as a short. So this connection goes directly to ground. Then we have actually our simple basic template, let's say inverting amplifier configuration with the VA as the input and the VL as the output, because then we have the feedback resistance R2 and this input resistance is R1, and we can use that formula minus R2 over R1. So minus feedback resistance over the input resistance is shown here times the input, so we have this. This is just the contribution of that VA on the load voltage. Let's call this also equation number two. Now going to the other one is this voltage. So we X, uh, make this ground VA. If I look at it, I can say, if I consider this V plus first as let's say the voltage source, 
I can see a flipped version, actually a mirrored version on this axis, the non-inverting amplifier. So we can say it's 1 plus the feedback resistance divided by the resistance going from the inverting node to ground, because this is now grounded. And then we have this expression, but remember it is V plus times the gain, which is this gain. This expression is the gain of the non-inverting amplifier, considering this as the input voltage. But we know VB is the actual input for this case, so we need to know what the V plus is. Now we can use, since this is a series connection and this is sort of an open because the current flow is there zero, we can say, let's call this also equation number three, we can say voltage divider rule here. So we can say V plus is R4, this voltage, divided by the total resistor R3 and R4 times VB. And this equation number four can be now used in equation number three. So I'll substitute that, Some, uh, equation number four in three, you get this following. So you get an expression of the gain of this non inverting amplifier times the attenuation factor and then times the VB. And this is now the part what we require for the second case. Now we can now say it is equation number five and then substitute equation number two and also the equation number five. So those are the partial effects in the equation number one. Then we have the following. So we can see this is now the expression. And why is this now a difference amplifier? Because we started with that. It is actually looking at the difference between the two voltage sources, but scaled. So we can see this part, we can call it, for example, the constant KB times the VB minus the constant, let's say this one is KA times VA. And if you make this, for example, one, and it's also one, you can choose the resistance by yourself, then we have VB minus VA. So it is possible that you then subtract one voltage source from the other. But this is an expression, the general expression, where all the resistors are free to choose. Now, we move on and say, what is then the load voltage itself? Now, we have an expression now for the load voltage. We can use the values and then calculate the load voltage. This is the load voltage already given the expression. And we can say, let's now substitute everything. Now, 400 for R2, 100 for R1, 400 over for 100 for R1, and we have the 900 for R4 and 600 for R3, and 6 for the VB, and 2 for the VA. So if I now work it out, I get exactly 10 volts, plus 10. Okay. It can be negative, of course, if this contribution is larger than this one. So that is possible. Now, let's also look at the current delivered by the op amp. This is this one. Now, for that, we need to set up the equation of Kirchhoff, so Kirchhoff's current law at node Y, and I call this node Y because there's the uh, operational amplifier current pushing out, and this current will be then make this IL, and also this current is also shown there to calculate the IOP. But you see, if I now develop the current equation here at node Y, I can see I2 plus IOP makes actually I load. So the load current is the summation of the I2 plus the IOP. But IOP is then the I load minus the I2. Do I know VL and RL? Yes, we can express that. So we can say IL can be expressed using Ohm's law by VL over RL. This is the equation now we have substituted instead of IL. And I2 is this voltage, voltage across the R2. That is this voltage, V minus, minus VL. Over R2 is then the current I2. That's actually shown here. What you also can do, that is also perfectly fine, you can also say VA, this voltage, minus this VL, divided by the summation of R1 and R2, and that will also give you I2. Why? Because this current here, going from left to right for I1, is exact the same as I2. That will give you the exact same result. So we have now the voltage drop between these two nodes for the resistor R2. Now, since this is equal to each other, we can say, now we have dealt with this one by setting up this expression for VL. We can say V plus is R4 over R3 plus R4 times VB. And that was this expression. And you can now substitute the values and you will get 3.6 volts. So this is 3.6 volts. This is also 3.6 volts. Why? Due to negative feedback, these are made equal to each other by the op amp. So we can say 10 over 50, so 10 volts already calculated for the load voltage, 
minus 3.6 for this, minus 10 for the V-load over 400. Now, if you do the math here, you will get 216 milliamps. So we're pushing out of this op-amp. Okay, now we have the collection. So we can now collect them together, A, the B, and the C. This is the summary of the results for this example. Let's also look at the simulation result. We will like to verify our calculations. This is the circuit I have drawing in the simulator. You can see the R1, R2, R3, and R4. So all of them are shown here. And also the load, we have the two voltage sources, VA and VB, two volts and six volts. You can see directly, here's the current arrow, which measures the current in this branch, and also the voltage pin, which measures the voltage at this node. You can see it's 260 milliamps, so what we have calculated, and also 10 volts, also what we have calculated. So this is verified in this form. To get more information, I also made another simulation to, uh, let's say, produce a table of the results. So exactly the same circuit, but you get a lot of more information for each component. So you get here this table for this circuit, and you can also see the node. So I will also clarify what we have discussed before in our calculations, because we have now IOP, which is 260 milliamps, is this one. So again, uh, in a different form, verified. You can also see this 10 volts VL, which is this. What you also see interesting is VP underscore 5, which is actually this node voltage, it is 5. It is 3.6, and we actually also had that 3.6 by using the voltage divider rule for calculating this voltage across R2. Which also is this V3, which is also 3.6. So V3 or VP3 and VP5 are all equal to each other, again, due to negative feedback. So we can say our calculations are all verified in this simulation. Let's also now look at the actual circuit in the simulator and then discuss there more about the circuit. So let's now jump to the SPI simulator. All right, we are now here in the SPI simulator. This is again the circuit we have discussed. This is the op-amp. This is R1, R2, R3, R4, and the two voltage sources VA and VB. And this is the load. And this is a current arrow to measure the current in this branch. And this is the voltage pin to measure the voltage at this node. So this current arrow can be inserted using this meter so we can have a lot of options here so if you go to meters and you click on this one current arrow and you can change the name and then place it in the branch you want to measure the current in a similar form you can do that for the voltage pin which is shown here the first one click on it and then change the name by double click on this one and then you can say v out or vs etc okay now if i now do on this circuit analysis, DC analysis, and then calculate node voltages. And it will calculate only the voltages for this part where we want to measure it. So if I place more current sources and voltage source, uh, current meters and voltage meters, I get more information. So you can see this. So it's 10 volts as calculated and also 360 milliamps. If I, for example, also place a pin here, let me do that to show you that this is indeed possible. So if I now also bring this here, and if I now place it in this pen because that is exact same as this one and let's call this v uh, minus and if i now again do the analysis dc analysis and then going to this one you can see directly the 3.6 volts we have actually also used for our calculations of this output current of this op amp okay okay now we can also generate a table we can say let's do a table, so again, analysis, these analysis, and then table of results. Here we go. You can see all of the information. And that's actually, again, clearly seen. And you can also click on the components. You can say, I would like to click on this one. It will be highlighted for each of them. So 10 volts and also 20 milliamps through our load. You can also click on the node, just in this with this pen. You can see directly this 3.6 or this one. So it will jump actually to that a specific uh, node. All right, guys, this is for this example about the different amplifier. This is actually a, a standard form. This is the most simple configuration you can get for a different amplifier. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting videos and topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.